Hey guys, and welcome to the Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary, and it's time for a Species Spotlight. This week, I'm going to be talking to you about Clea Helena, the assassin snail, a carnivorous whelk from Indonesia and Thailand that has quickly taken the hobby by storm. It's gained amazing popularity in the past few years because of its ability to eat pest snails, the ram's horns, the pond snails, the Malaysian trumpets. But there are a few things that you should know. They do breed, and readily. So I like to call it Assassin Snails, a cautionary tale. I hope you enjoy. So these little bumblebee striped critters are the Assassin Snail. And I've dropped in a few pond snails for you to be able to see how they behave. As I mentioned in my intro, these guys have become super popular in the past several years because of their ability to sort of deal with a common problem of pest snails. And it's really awesome that they can, you know, each of these little assassin snails, which get just barely over an inch, will eat three or four of these pest snails, including ram's horns, these pond snails, bladder snails, or the Malaysian trumpet snail. But what's a little bit more concerning is that um, initially they, it was said that they, they repro reproduced really slowly, but I find that to absolutely not be the case. It's just that they're <clears throat> once their eggs hatch, it takes several months for the baby snails to become visible in a tank as they generally burrow down into the substrate eating decaying matter or microorganisms until uh, they become visible at about grain of sand size. You know, and again, that takes like two months. So these guys, while they are sexually specific, so it requires a male and a female, um, and they do lay individual eggs, they absolutely do reproduce very readily. You can see this guy cruising around with that sort of proboscis extended hunting for food. See, there's several in the background. I dropped in a handful of these snails. I'm hoping to be able to capture an attack for you because it's pretty fascinating to see. These guys actually have a forked appendage that they extend into the cavity of the, the snail. Um, and then they suck the body of the snail out while it's still alive. It's kind of gruesome. In some cases you can see actual blood trails. Here we go. So what they do is they sort of grip the pest snail with their foot or the bottom and then uh, they jab this fork like appendage into the body of the snail eating it while it's alive. It's pretty gruesome. Let's see if we can see the foot. You can see the eye stalks on the one in the back. Interesting as well is that if these guys are interested in attacking a larger snail, they will gang up together and uh, take it down in force. It's, it's pretty gnarly. And as I mentioned, you know, these guys can be really valuable for dealing with a pest snail problem, but again, they're going to breed. They lay their eggs singularly in the crevices of decor at the base of plants as well as in the pores of sponge filtration. You can see here a singular egg. You can see the baby snail inside of it actually, which is pretty cool. Um, and again, they lay a lot of these. And the reason I say it's an assassin snail, a cautionary tale, is because there's many of us that like to house decorative snails and if you keep assassin snails in your display tanks that you're then um, especially planted ones that you're then going to share decor out of it's very easy to transfer the uh, eggs to another hobbyist I mean they're very tiny eggs and it's it can be difficult to to see them so many a times I've bought plants from different clubs or at conventions or even ordered online and they've come with assassin snail eggs and I've accidentally introduced assassins to my nearite snails or my apple snails in that fashion 
So to be responsible, the best thing to do is to label the plants if you are going to be selling them from a display tank that has assassin snails. You can see these guys ganging up on this one larger pond snail. It's also not totally known with these guys if they can um, withstand cold temperatures. It's possible that they could estivate and survive freezing temperatures. So you should also be very careful when discarding your plants or decor that have had these critters in the same tank so that you don't accident accidentally introduce them into the wild. You can see the that forked proboscis. I mean, and these guys are fast. They go right after those pest snails. They don't waste any time. So again, I mean, they can be really great for taking care of that pest snail problem, but again, use caution. I prefer, rather than putting them into a display, to set up a tank just for them. And that can be a small tank. These guys are really sturdy and tolerant to a wide range of parameters. So I'll set up a little five gallon, throw my assassin snails in there, and then collect all of the pest snails from around the fish room and just drop them in there. I actually keep these in a sweater box under my rack. I don't even use filtration. Um, and then as I'm collecting the pest snails from out, around the fish room, I just drop them in with the assassins. And then that way I can make sure that I don't accidentally transfer assassin eggs into tanks that um, will house ornamental snails later. And these guys originate from Asia. They're found in a lot of the waterways there. They're actually a whelk, totally carnivorous in the wild, most often preying on decomposing or decaying matter in the substrate, as well as tadpoles, worms, and other snails. If you run out of pest snails in your fish room to feed them, they can also easily be supplemented with pellets or meaty foods like bloodworms. I find that they breed most prolifically with a live diet. Interesting, interestingly enough, these guys do not prey on each other, starving before they'll eat their own kind. See them here sniffing out the pest snails. It's only a matter of time till they go get those guys. I think they're really attractive snails. And a much better alternative to adding uh, fish species to control snails as the majority of the snail eating fish species are not particularly good community additions. Thanks for watching. Make sure to stop by my Facebook page as well as my website, MsJinx.com where you can find upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can keep up with my Tuesday's tips and my Sunday species spotlights, as well as bonus videos on Thursdays.